Upantu. Some people love it. It is such a nice desktop experience. If you're eager to test the latest and greatest, then the interim releases are certainly where it's at. And some hate it. You're just excitingly steering somebody to something that those bugs, they're going to intensify. They don't care about their desktop and it shows. I, I was actually excited to take a look at it, but um, now not so much. And then there's me who loves it and hates it. Let's talk about why. But before we do that, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel a lot. Okay, Ubuntu, one of the most common used Linux distributions out there. It is based on Debian, a really stable distribution with a massive software library. It is also considered very easy for beginners, since not only is it backed by Canonical, a company which is mostly interested in the providing a solid experience for companies, but it also has been around very very long, which means there are a ton of guides, forums or even just the general knowledge base. Not to mention that Ubuntu with its many flavors of desktop environments basically offers something for everyone. You want a close to Windows experience, then you should check out Kubuntu. For a more out of the box Mac experience, go for Ubuntu Bachi. From good looking to functional and lightweight desktop environments, you probably will find something that you like personally. And even if not, Linux is customizable, so just choose whatever feels right as your starting point. The regular version of Ubuntu features GNOME as its desktop environment. And it's the one that I personally prefer. I find it to be very easy once you get used to its quite different workflow from literally anything I've used prior. But it's not hard to learn. Submenus are well structured and down feature unnecessary and confusing choices, like some other desktop environments. But it's still subjective and there are a lot of other choices out there. Heck. Even if you're not using Linux Mint, then even Cinnamon is an often overlooked gem. Alright, so that's that. But let me tell you that Ubuntu was an interesting experience for me. Because while it is easy for beginners, the more advanced users are actually the ones that have more of a struggle. Why is Ubuntu more of a hassle for more advanced Linux users? Well, let's see how a Linux newcomer would handle the system. Easy. Log in, go to the software store and download Discord for example. Very easy. But a more invested Linux user might know that snaps, which Ubuntu heavily promotes, are not the best when it comes to performance and startup time. But removing snap functionality is somewhat of a hassle, even with guides. For example, if you just follow this one, then yeah, you can disable snaps, but as soon as you want to download some software, sometimes it tells you that you need snap in order to download it. And going through all of the edit repositories and dependencies is not easy if we compare it to just install and don't worry about it. Another thing that struck me was Mesa and AMD support in general. While Mesa works really well on Ubuntu and as of the moment I'm recording the video also still features H.264 for API hardware acceleration, it's really not suitable for programs like DaVinci Resolve. On Fedora, and yeah, I verified this, all you have to do after the initial dependencies is to install ROCM OpenCL from RPM Fusion. On Ubuntu you can get it as well, if you add AMD's official repo. However, this does not result in DaVinci Resolve working. In fact, even installing proprietary parts of OpenCL was a real nightmare for me. And Ubuntu is an officially supported operating system. Simply download the package, install it to add the repo and use AMD GPU install to install the driver. Except the repo keys are not accepted by Ubuntu. What? Alright, so long story short, I couldn't get it to run in an acceptable time frame. Not good. But let's talk about something else. Software stores. If you didn't remove snaps from Ubuntu yet, then you might realize that the default one is slow. Like not only the startup time. And it looks… yeah. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Pfft. Who uses a GUI for installing apps on Linux anyway? Every new user! Learning the terminal is beneficial for everyone, but please, not as the first step. Better to start using the operating system first, before you get scared away. But look, Ubuntu is still Linux and you can swap applications for something more modern, like GNOME software, which is also not the best, but a lot better than Ubuntu Snap Store. Problem here is, let's check out the settings if we want to edit or add a repo. Um, what's that? Another application? What you see here is actually a remnant of Debian, but I think it is no excuse if other distributions manage to better integrate stuff like this for newcomers. Like I'm not mad at the application itself, since it is better, but better does not automatically mean easier. 
Usability is extremely important. Oh, and while speaking of usability, make sure to choose your flavor of Ubuntu carefully. Because editing the existing desktop environment can be a hassle. For example, while Ubuntu 22.10 does come with GNOME 43, it isn't that easy to get the native experience simply by disabling extensions and themes. Some Lipid Vita icons are straight up missing, and as soon as you change something into Ubuntu settings, it gets overwritten anyway. Now, Ubuntu does offer native desktop environments in the repo, but you have to be aware of that. Completely swapping and deleting the old one is also not recommended since some things can depend on it. So you basically need two desktop environments on your PC, which can be a problem for smaller storage devices, but... <laughs> so, is Ubuntu a beginner-friendly distro? For a newcomer, the experience will not result in many problems. However, if you are a content creator and rely on programs like DaVinci Resolve, then you might want to reconsider. If we compare Ubuntu to a distro like Fedora on the surface level, is it easier? Well, yeah, it is. But where one is worse, another one is better. But that accounts for the out-of-the-box experience on most distros. Yes, you can make any distribution work, but out-of-the-box, not a single one is flawless. Ubuntu is one of those distributions that just work for people who don't think about it too much, which is a great percentage of worldwide PC users. But that does not mean that it is automatically the best and easiest. If you care about the snappiness and overall latency of your system, like you want Linux to feel faster than Windows or Mac, even on the desktop, then the startup time of some snaps might bother you. And maybe you should go with something like Fedora. If you want many packages and don't go through the hassle of enabling and disabling repositories, then maybe go for something Arch-based. Besides Manjaro maybe, because the AUR does not quite work well with it. The thing is that Ubuntu is a great starting point, but as soon as you get more invested into Linux and you start to see its flaws, the more likely it is that it disappoints you. And that's where I'll leave it. Still great for servers though. So if you've liked this video, then definitely make sure to show it with a like and even subscribe to the channel. I'm also interested in your opinions about Ubuntu. Do you like it? How was your experience? Let me know in the comments down below. Oh, and while you're here, also make sure to check out this video. Couldn't hurt, probably. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.